Primary versus secondary sources. Learning to identify and distinguish between primary and secondary sources will help your understanding of the research process. Let's start with primary sources. Primary sources are documents or physical objects created during the time you're studying. Primary sources offer an inside view of a particular event, whether that's a period in history or a current issue in the news. Primary sources can be used to back up claims and criticisms, as evidence for theories and research, and as the focal point of a paper or discussion. They can often be useful to add historical perspective to your work. Examples of primary sources include diaries, letters, speeches, interviews, news footage, court documents, documented observations, original research, data, and more. Primary sources can also include creative works like novels, poetry, visual art, plays, or pieces of music. Primary sources can even be physical artifacts such as pottery, furniture, clothing, and even buildings and architecture. To understand the differences between primary and secondary sources, think about a detective gathering evidence. She interrogates suspects, inspects email and phone records, and even looks at DNA evidence. All of these things count as primary sources because they come directly from the source. After gathering all of her information, she writes up a report summarizing her findings. This report is a secondary source. Secondary sources interpret or analyze primary sources. There are one or more sources removed from an event. They can quote primary sources and may include pictures or graphics credited to a primary source. Use of secondary sources to get background information and understand the scope of a topic, see what others have discussed and get opinions, learn how recent events affect or fit into a larger picture, and to understand the significance of events, data, or works of literature and art. Examples of secondary sources include textbooks, magazine articles, essays, reviews, histories, criticisms, commentaries, and encyclopedia articles. Any book which provides a summary of events or synthesizes information from many primary sources is a secondary source. So, how do primary and secondary sources get used in research? Let's look at a couple of examples. Literature. Let's say that you're studying Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. The novel itself, written by Austen, is a primary source. So are her letters, where she wrote about her work and her time period to friends and family members. A secondary source would be any kind of academic journal or article or book that interprets her work and her time period, as well as works like biographies that collect and synthesize information about her life. Science. In science, direct observation, i.e. data, is the primary source. For example, Gregor Mendel, the founder of the science of genetics, studied the inheritance of traits in pea plants. He then wrote his findings up in an article, Experiments on Plant Hybridization, in 1865. The data itself, as well as the report, are primary sources. Next, other scientists within the field responded to his findings. Science historians wrote accounts of his works much later. Articles that respond to Mendel's research, as well as books written about the role of his research in founding the field of genetics, are secondary sources. Have additional questions? Please contact a librarian at a TCC library near you.